Ladies and gentlemen, dear chairs, thank you for the opportunity to present you the ESO guideline on endarterectomy and stenting for carotid artery stenosis. These are my disclosures. It was a pleasure to co-chair this module working group together with Hans Henning Eckstein, consisting of a number of experts in the field from vascular neurology, vascular surgery, interventional radiology, as well as supported by two ESO uh, methodologists. I would also like to thank the reviewers of the PICO questions and the guideline listed at the bottom of the page. We provide evidence guidelines for the management of patients with asymptomatic carotid stenosis, as well as symptomatic carotid stenosis, and the subgroup of patients shown on the left-hand column. Interventions and comparators include stenting, endarterectomy, and medical therapy, contemporary at the time of the study. We looked at the number of outcomes in the periprocedural phase, defined as occurring within 30 days of treatment, as well as in the post-procedural long-term follow-up. We only considered data from randomized controlled trials for the evidence-based recommendations. Out of the 35 resulting PICO questions, I can only show you a selection of those PICO questions that include the most important outcomes for all the comparisons and the most important patient subgroups. In patients with asymptomatic carotid stenosis, does endarterectomy compared with medical therapy alone reduce the long-term risk of ipsilateral stroke, also considering the risk of periprocedural stroke or death? We found moderate quality of evidence that it does. Quality was downgraded by one level because the largest trials contributing data to this analysis were done two to three decades ago and medical therapy has evolved since. For the outcome of long-term stroke occurring in any territory or periprocedural death, we have subgroup data from one trial, ACST. We found no evidence for a difference in the benefit of surgery between men and women. In ACST, patients above the age of 75 years did not appear to benefit from surgery. In patients with at least 60% asymptomatic carotid stenosis considered to be at increased risk of stroke on best medical therapy alone, we recommend carotid endarterectomy. This recommendation is independent of sex and stenosis severity. As an expert consensus statement, in selected patients 75 years of age or older, with an expected survival of at least five years, carotid endarterectomy is suggested after careful considerations of risks and benefits. Features associated with an increased stroke risk that may aid in selecting patients for treatment include silent infarction on neuroimaging, high degree or progression of stenosis, echolucent plaque on ultrasound, intraplaque hemorrhage on MRI, and microemboli or reduced cerebrovascular reserve on transcranial Doppler. Only a single trial, the three arm space two study, provided evidence comparing stenting versus medical therapy for asymptomatic carotid stenosis. That trial provided very low quality evidence that medical therapy might be superior to stenting in preventing the risk of ipsilateral stroke, including harms of periprocedural stroke or death. Quality was downgraded for reasons of bias as the trial was stopped early, indirectness because the reported length of follow-up was not sufficient to answer the PICO question as well as imprecision. In patients with asymptomatic carotid stenosis, we therefore made a weak recommendation 
against carotid artery stenting as a routine alternative to best medical therapy alone. More data will be available in the hopefully not, not too distant future from the CREST2 study regarding this comparison. Among patients with asymptomatic carotid stenosis for the comparison of stenting versus endartrectomy, we found moderate quality of evidence that endartrectomy might be superior at preventing the risk of long-term ipsilateral stroke, including periprocedural stroke or death compared with stenting. Quality of evidence was downgraded by one level for reasons of imprecision. This difference was mainly due to the different risk in periprocedural stroke or death, which was higher in stenting. In patients with asymptomatic stenosis, in whom revascularization is considered to be appropriate, we therefore suggest endartrectomy as the current treatment of choice. As an expert consensus statement, in patients who are less suitable for surgery, stenting may be suggested. The independently assessed risk of in-hospital stroke or death with either procedure should be as low as possible in patients with asymptomatic stenosis, ideally below 2%. The asymptomatic carotid surgery trial too has recently completed recruitment of more than 3,600 patients with asymptomatic stenosis and will considerably add to the evidence base which will likely lead to an update of the above recommendation in the near future. In patients with symptomatic stenosis, does endartrectomy versus medical therapy reduce the long-term risk of ipsilateral stroke, including the risk of periprocedural stroke or death? When we included the data from the Veterans Affair, NASET and ECST trials, and patients with any degree of stenosis, we actually found very low quality of evidence that surgery is beneficial. Quality was downgraded for reasons of inconsistency due to statistical heterogeneity likely resulting from the different degrees of stenosis included in these trials. Indirectness, because again, medical therapy has evolved since these trials were done as well as imprecision. Therefore, the evidence grouped by degree of stenosis is much more useful to guide treatment in daily practice. We found moderate quality of evidence that endartrectomy is beneficial in patients with severe stenosis and low quality of evidence that endartrectomy is beneficial in patients with moderate stenosis. There was no sign of a benefit that endartrectomy benefits patients with near occlusion or with only mild stenosis. The further subgroup analysis were therefore done only with patients who had at least 50% of stenosis. We found no evidence of a difference in the effect of endartrectomy between older and younger patients. There was some formal statistical heterogeneity according to sex. Women included in the NASET and ECST trials did not appear to benefit from endartrectomy. However, this may simply be due to a lack of power as only relatively few women were included in these trials. There was, however, clear evidence that the benefit of surgery decreases with increasing time since the last ischemic event. The largest effect of surgery in these trials was seen in patients who were included in the studies within two weeks of their symptoms. In patients with severe symptomatic carotid stenosis, we therefore recommend carotid endartrectomy. In patients with moderate symptomatic carotid stenosis, we suggest carotid endartrectomy. In patients with mild stenosis, we recommend against carotid endartrectomy. In those patients with moderate or severe stenosis in whom surgery is considered appropriate, we recommend early treatment, ideally 
within two weeks of the first symptoms. These recommendations are independent of sex and age. The final comparison was between stenting and endartrectomy for treatment of symptomatic carotid stenosis. We found moderate quality of evidence that endartrectomy is superior to, st to stenting in preventing long-term ipsilateral stroke when periprocedural stroke or death events were included. Quality was downgraded for reasons of indirectness because stenting as a procedure has evolved since these trials were performed. When excluding periprocedural events, we found moderate quality of evidence that stenting and endarterectomy are equally effective at preventing post-procedural ipsilateral stroke in the long term. For the outcome of severe re-stenosis following treatment, data from patients with symptomatic and asymptomatic carotid stenosis were combined. There was very low quality of evidence that stenting and endarterectomy do not differ in long-term risk of re-stenosis. Evidence was downgraded for reasons of inconsistency due to statistical heterogeneity, indirectness as well as imprecision. The main difference between stenting and endarterectomy for symptomatic stenosis is again in the risk of periprocedural stroke or death, which clearly favors endarterectomy. However, this effect is strongly dependent on age. In patients below the age of 70 years, we observed no difference in the risk of periprocedural stroke or death between stenting and endarterectomy. Whereas in patients above the age of 70 years, stenting was associated with a double risk of periprocedural stroke or, rest, or, or, stroke or death compared with endarterectomy. We found no effect for a differential treatment effect on this outcome uh, between men and women. Stenting was associated with a lower risk of myocardial infarction uh, during the procedure than endarterectomy, and with a lower risk of periprocedural cranial nerve injury. In patients with symptomatic carotid stenosis, we recommend endarterectomy as the treatment of choice. In patients with symptomatic stenosis below the age of 70 years, we suggest that stenting may be considered as an alternative to endarterectomy. The suitability of a patient for either treatment should also take into account the interval since the last ischemic event as well as anatomical and morphological features. The independently assessed risk of in-hospital stroke or death following either treatment should not exceed 4%. In conclusion, we provided evidence-based practice guidelines for individualized treatment decisions in patients with asymptomatic and symptomatic carotid stenosis. Despite the wealth of evidence, though, we have to acknowledge the fact that endarterectomy, stenting, and medical therapy have evolved since the trials contributing the evidence were performed. Ongoing trials will provide new evidence for the optimal treatment of asymptomatic stenosis. And further research is needed to evaluate carotid artery stenting with novel stent device, devices protection devices and alternative access routes, as well as new paradigms in selecting patients for treatment. Thank you very much for your attention.